To begin with, I want to welcome all of you who have come here and offer you my most heartfelt Tashi Dele. Tadari and next, I want to say that uh, on this uh, third visit of mine to America, I'm especially delighted to have the opportunity to again return to the seat uh, established, the North American seat uh, established by the 16th Jawan Kamapa Rongjunik Petroje. And I'm equally delighted to meet with all of you, my many friends. Nimakashi <laughs> One thing I should tell you before going further is that uh, before arriving at Karma Triana uh, yesterday, I've been touring a, a number of universities at, which, uh, at each of which I've had to give uh, many uh, lectures. So I've been very busy uh, speaking and for the last few days have been equally busy in DC. So last night I began to feel uh, so exhausted that I actually felt a little unwell, a little weak. And so although I'm going to be teaching uh, starting this morning for the next uh, three days, um, I think it's rather unlikely that I'll be um, doing so with the energy I would have hoped. <laughs> development of gene compassion somebody that you will get share with all just come to the body on a seven that come to the body on our chasing area come to the day we call the act among water to see she and she do sally i come to the button to remember something to the schedule uh, indicated that this morning i am to uh, present the vow of refuge and then uh, in the afternoon talk about the development of genuine compassion. However, I think it would be better uh, if I were to introduce the refuge vow this morning and then actually confer it uh, this afternoon. This that's our 
I expect that many of you uh, are uh, already somewhat well educated uh, in the Dharma, um, but no doubt there are also people here who are fairly new to it. So let me begin by saying that the vow of refuge is the gateway or doorway to all of the Buddha Dharma. It is, and going for refuge as a practice is not only the root of all Buddhist practice, but actually includes the essence of all Buddhist practice. In exploring the refuge vow, we first need to inquire into the cause of it. In other words, what are the reasons for which we might take refuge? What are the conditions under which we take refuge? The reason why we must begin our exploration with this is that in the uh, study of any aspect of Buddha Dharma, it is essential that one understand the reason for doing anything. Sangi Sumbe, the Kando, Lijakatolian Lame in the um, Sanskrit source uh, for the Tibetan translations, there is a verse uh, in which it says, in which the Buddha is quoted as saying, examine my teachings as carefully as you would gold before purchasing it. And there's only really one stanza of four lines given in the Sanskrit source, but in the Pali, in the equivalent Pali text, uh, the, the explanation is much more extensive and goes on to say, do not take anything on the authority of a teacher, nor engage in the teachings out of family tradition. Only engage in them after having understood the valid reasons for doing so. That's the name of the spiritual tradition, religious religion, the spiritual religious spiritual side that easy to the easy to get the Religion, the spiritual, this kavayu the religion side, the belief belief system, some of that is more traditions and other the custom that is being developed. Spiritual side, that is also a key. Nyams nyong ya thon eh nyong kwan dobsi. Then the chilean musu shuye. In a way, I'm embarrassed 
um, to talk about the difference between English words because my uh, English, in my own opinion, uh, is uh, somewhat lacking. But there seems to be a difference between the uh, words spiritual tradition and religious tradition as commonly used in the English language. And I think that the difference is that a religion or religious tradition is a handed down set of beliefs, a tradition, a set of customs. Whereas spiritual tradition or spirituality is a matter of personal exploration and experience. religious tradition major religious tradition. What's so you the spiritual tradition of this is what's so you are that can energy to look at number so so you give that the cuisine are all yeah missing are all that so so cuisine are all yeah that the yum yum chum was some of that can energy to the chung big that top one of the ten minutes or your magic cautious arms the nation to me but it and then you said did you sell ten and a car for that um tang I think that every religious tradition in this world began as a spiritual tradition. Each religion began when the founding teacher of that religion shared their experience, their realization with their followers. But then starting with their followers, what began as a, gra as a spiritual tradition gradually became a religion in which people uh, follow based on the acceptance, the faithful acceptance of what is taught. And so they're basing their following the religion on faith and the following of custom. Tizuinea, Nyamnyonke the problem w when a spirituality becomes religion is that what began as the sharing by the founding teacher of his or her own experience and realization, pointing that out to students and enabling them to practice in such a way that they might achieve it, over time, starts to become based on tradition and mere custom. What must remain, even when it is pointed out, a matter of individual or personal discovery and recognition, becomes less important than merely con conformance uh, with tradition and custom. <laughs> So 
So because finally spirituality must be a journey of personal discovery, it is for that reason that it is important to understand the reasons and conditions, uh, the reasons for and conditions under which one goes for refuge. That in, in this, as in all things, we must respect the basic principle. We must emphasize the essence of Dharma. Sometimes we make the mistake of casting aside the essence and overemphasizing unimportant, even extraneous details. We reject the root and cling to the branches. I'll give you an analogy for this. Maji kamba de nakbondu jito wa. Tene jisane kashi ni kuya al pendo yon sare. The darkness in this hall will help those of you who wish to sleep. Maji ngazu chige jisu tit orandi ngazu kumshi jisu yabi yinsan tis chakdo. Da bhuji jisu. <laughs> Westerners may be slightly better off because they're, they're, they're used to paying attention in these circumstances, but Tibetans are used to going to sleep as soon as the Dharma lecture starts and only waking up when it ends. <laughs> Imagination Chesson, Go Lomachigi, Umasangi, that 
Zara, that rich child, you sonny, tea sorry, son, son, carriage. Now, do you know what he over Miss Ever? Over Miss Ever, child. Tiny tea, in a last summer, that tea, tea, and yam to you, which lamb looks sure of the catch him or charge him. The district to an assault, can him of so they are. When gender issue penalty, um. ပြည်ကြီးပြည်နေကြီးမဲ့နေတဲ့ရင်တို့ကြီးကြီးမဲ့ကြီးနေတဲ့ဆိုရင်ပြည်နေတာမှန်ကိုကြီးကြီးမှ
for two reasons. One is fear, and the other is faith. Fear arises within us in consideration of that from which we seek refuge, and it inspires us to search for a refuge. Faith uh, also arises within us and gives us the uh, momentum or impetus to rely fully upon a source of refuge once we have found it. ยังจิตตัดตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวต
emotional fear is limited to immediate fear of immediate dangers, if something is not right in front of us, if it is not an immediate danger, even though it may be a great danger, but an indirect one, we feel no fear. The best example of this is climate change. People don't feel fear when they contemplate climate change, even though it's incredibly dangerous to us, because it's a distant danger. It is so vast and so gradual an ongoing event that we don't feel fear. To return to the tiger analogy, our lack of fear of climate change is very much like if someone were to say to us, in three months, a tiger will be right in front of where you are now. <laughs> we wouldn't feel fear. So our, our instinctive emotional fear does protect us from danger, but only immediate danger. And in order to be protected from indirect or eventual danger, even grave or disastrous eventual danger, we need to think carefully, to analyze. Emotional instinctive fear will not do it. ยับยินะตะจิบะตะคันดิจอร์ตะเตะเปนะงาซุซอบลินเดทอลยาตะติซานจีเปนะซึนกีจิบะมังบุจิยองเดออะเรเจเดมิมะเจลุมบะมังบ
In fact, it is inseparable from us. It is part of us. But yet it is our gravest danger. And we need to recognize it through careful analysis because it is a source of eventual disaster for us, even us as individuals. ชั้นบุจเกมารบาเซเมเบชั้นบุจมาเซเยเบชั้นบุจชินดาติโซเลียดิเนกบดิมังกุชิงาซุกาจอนซนออตัดดิงาเลชุโดมินโดซามารุช
We think to ourselves, this has nothing to do with me when we think about or read about anything that happens to anyone else. And we keep on thinking, this is nothing to do with me until this or that happens to us or happens to someone we regard as a brother and so forth. And we think, of course, I don't care what happens to him or her because they wouldn't care if it happened to me. And using that logic, we, so we don't care what happens to them and they don't care what happens to us and through this, we've created a world without love, a cold world, a world that lacks warmth. And this is the grave danger of, uh, posed by our insufficiency of love. The first inspiration, the first reason to go for refuge to the Three Jewels is the recognition of that danger and the wish to be protected from that danger by developing the type and degree of love and compassion taught in the Dharma. Faith is very difficult from one point of view. Uh, many Westerners that I know say to me, uh, faith is very difficult, especially devotion for the Guru is particularly difficult. Yina Faith, to use the English word, I think fundamentally has to be a trust in oneself. Trust in oneself and one's actions. So a type of self-confidence. To use my own life as an example, I left Tibet for India when I was 14. And I did that based on the fact that I had sufficient self-confidence to make that journey. If I had thought very carefully about everything that could happen, I probably wouldn't have dared to do it. I would have been caught in thinking, well, this might go wrong or that might go wrong. Preparation for anything is not enough. We have to have self-confidence. And it was self-confidence that enabled me to take that daring step and make that daring journey. So in my experience, 
our actual ability, whatever ability we have to do anything, comes from self-confidence. Today, just a little bit, that some of the garbage we use is shared with them. So, the children, the young people shared with them. So, the society, that kind of some to say, the children never do that. That society, some to say, the part you need, we just use you need to stand up. そうさん、さんとずっと天才だとか、本当にそういう人間ばっかりやんが、そういうメンバーの知識じゃない。だって、ちょうちね、インリアリティだよ。だ、ちょうちね、だって、インリアリティでさ、だって、どこまでだ、
It must also include self-confidence and hope in oneself. If our faith is based on desperation, on a sense of our lacking any means whatsoever ourselves and desperately appealing only to others, I think that is not a true or authentic faith because authentic faith is joyous and courageous and brave. Uh, so that is an explanation of the two reasons for which we go for refuge, fear and faith. Although in this sense, it might be better for fear to say sense of danger. The word actually means danger, so it means a recognition of danger. These are the reasons for which we go for refuge, and I think it is important that we uh, do so based on our own experience and analysis uh, leading to an understanding of these reasons. So looking at the schedule, this seems to be the time at which I'm allowed to stop for the morning. <laughs> so I'm going to stop and I will see you all this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.